yeah so this is the second part of, of my two-part series uh the first part if you haven't listened to it just um you know scroll uh, to my my page or at the diametrics page uh, or a youtube page where you'd also find this recording uh of my uh explanation or interpretation of why i think the exchange rate is, is devaluing that fast i, I i'd explain that uh a bit now this part addresses this abuki fx issue I, i've got a lot of calls with friends asking me to try and explain what, it, what exactly is going on like what the heck is happening why are we suddenly on the uh, why is abuki fx suddenly on the attack like why whole cbn governor went on tv yesterday and said that they are ready to fight bring the fight to abuja like on radio, man. It was kind of strange, but we live in very difficult times now, so uh, one really has to be careful. Okay, so what what exactly is going on? Um, a few days ago, you know, I, I, there was a, a something I, I posted on my IG and my Twitter that you know sort of suggested that they were coming after Aboke FX, and it was like uh, it was it was a message you know, telling the website to stop publishing Aboke FX. I'm not going to name that website. Stop publishing that book here first stuff uh, because it was illegal. I was kind of surprised. I was like, hmm, why are they going after that book here first? What have they done? And so yesterday, um, you know, there was also an article on Narometrics, and I think it was also on the cable, uh, confirming that the CBN was actually investigating about KFX. And this was confirmed by the CBN governor yesterday, and he alleged that. Uh, those guys who are running some kind of you know funny scheme where they are profiting on the exchange rate. So, in simple English, those guys set the exchange rate, and then they profit from it because they buy and sell. So imagine that I wake up today and say, "Oh, the exchange rate is five hundred two. Nobody knows how I set it up. I just say five hundred two, and then I buy dollars. And then tomorrow I say the exchange rate is five hundred four, right? And everybody says it's five hundred four because that's what I've said. And then I sell. I make money. And then the next day again, I buy again at five or four. And then I say two days later, exchange rate is five or six. And so it's possible theoretically for people to make money like that. Uh, and that is basically what they're alleging. And they also allege that the guy has multiple bank accounts. That's the owner of the company has multiple bank accounts in Nigeria. And they saw a lot, they've seen a lot of dollar inflows and outflows. Uh, I also even got intel, you know, that... You know, this, the so-called person withdraws money from one ATM account somewhere in UK, like, allegations against the guy. Why so much allegations? What exactly has this guy done wrong, right? Um, so, personally, I don't think that... I mean, it's, it's up to the guy to prove whether he's engaging in any kind of legal, illegality or not, right? I mean, and he's not going to prove it to me or to anyone. It's the court, if you feels like he should he's put out a press with they put out a press with this yesterday saying they don't do that so uh but what exactly could he could he have done wrong and you know could he have done that inadvertently perhaps so in financial markets remember what i said in the first part price determination and discovery is a very very technical thing it requires a lot of transparency for example in the stock market there are clear rules that determine how prices change. Everybody knows those rules because financial markets can easily be manipulated even when you have rules, not to talk of when you don't have rules at all. That's one. Uh, you can, in even in commodities market as well, there are clear rules that determine how prices are, 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 are how, that explain how prices are determined. And these things are very well, um, they are transparent. Now, people who also host prizes in financial markets, right, usually are not necessary players in that market. So they are basically a marketplace where people buy and sell. So based off the data they get from the buying and selling that marketplace, they know the prices. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So let, let me explain again. If it's, let's say, the FMDQ, that's the market where, you know, we buy and sell bonds and securities, fixed income securities, and even exchange. The FMDQ is an exchange where people buy and sell stuff. So they know what somebody has bidded and they know what somebody has offered. And they know the price that they exchange because they exchange in their platform. 
So it's on a transparent basis, they can basically tell you what the price is. Same thing of a same thing with a regular crypto exchange. So most crypto exchanges know their prices because they know the people that are buying and selling within the exchange so they know that and they can reference and have a way of averaging what those prices are these are fundamental things that any market must have especially markets that display prices you must always have that and that's because you need to create some kind of transparency so that's why today if you wanted to buy in binance or any of these you know crypto exchanges or even qdax you would have to have registered, open an account and all that, you deposit money, you know, and then they can see the transaction flows and know how your prices have been determined. Now, for, for a book here effect, that doesn't happen. And do we know why? It doesn't, it, it, it's like that because it's not a market where people basically buy and sell dollars. It's not. It's basically a curator. Uh, it's just a market where, not even a market, it's just a website that aggregates exchange rates on the streets. That's it, and then puts it there. Unfortunately, or fortunately, it is just now turned to a reference site for people to go to if they wanted to see exchange rates in the parallel market. Fortunately, that has made some good money and business you know, sense for the owner, right? Because probably makes money from all sorts of other things. Maybe if you really read this press release yesterday, they sell data to, you know, companies all over the world and blah, blah. So it makes a lot of money from that. Um, but on the unfortunate side, it has, because it is now a reference for where you can basically buy or sell dollars, it's a reference price for the, the for a reference for the price of, of the exchange rate of the parallel market, uh, it then opens up a lot of stuff. Okay, so how are the prices determined? It doesn't conform with what we know of how markets determine prices. I explained that earlier. Uh, is there a you know a guideline or rules that determine how, how that shows how you how you determine your prices? Uh, who are the people who supply you these prices? Do they have names? Do they you know what's the quantity? Was so there are a lot of things that go into price determination. So it, it's really a thin line, right? Between just trying to create and report news, which is not the only one doing it. They're not the only ones. There are a lot of websites that basically do it. It's even easy. You can start it yourself on your Twitter handle. Or you just call a few malams. How much is the price today? How much is the price? And they tell you, and then you put it on your Twitter handle, right? Um, so that's all. But unfortunately, you know, it's just turned out to be the reference site for exchange rate that's it not that you know what he's doing is unique to him alone there are a lot of websites out there who do something similar uh but fortunately that, that's what it is and and that looks like where where we have now whether he's profiting from it in buying and selling i mean that is up to that kind of seems wild to me though sounds wild uh but that's up up to you know to the guy you know to go and prove on his lawyers to to go and prove in, in court but in terms of where you know maybe it's kind of like cross the line that's really the issue so the challenge now becomes okay so how what do people what could he have done better or how do we get around things like this because we really want to know what the exchange rate is i don't know so maybe somebody was saying maybe perhaps should i put in a disclaimer there saying that look we don't determine the prices uh, don't don't take these prices seriously. Take with a pinch of salt. It's nothing serious. It's just the price. So we just called one or two malams. We don't know whether those malams are saying the truth or not. Maybe perhaps that means just a you know sort of absolve it. Uh, could he have maybe said, okay, this is how we determine our prices, and have a page that sort of like explains how prices are determined, and blah 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 blah. Maybe. Uh, I, I don't know that's in you know we can always there's still going to be a lot of debates and discussions around you know what can be done because we do want freedom of expression freedom of press freedom people should be free to just you know do things yeah we don't want to be gagged i mean i don't think we want to be gagged and there are people out there who really really you know need to reference something to to be sure that they are not being cheated because we're in the world this is the internet world today so everything is just basically on the internet and we sort of crowdsource a lot of stuff these days so uh i guess whoever is able to maybe have a very clear way uh you know that shows how they display these things probably might might you know might might 
do a better work or might maybe you know get out of all this all this quagmire. Uh, but but that's the issue here, and and, and it's really bitter. It's, it's it's tough. It's annoying to a lot of people, you know that why is this happening? But you know I've just trying to explain why maybe even if there's a reason why the CBN is doing what they're doing, even if that reason is is acceptable or not, uh, that's because of the market. And the reason why it's this way today is what I said before. The exchange rate is the gap is wide now, right? And that is what is basically driving the economy. So people are basically repricing their assets and their goods and services based on what they're seeing. And if you don't really know how these prices are determined, there's no science behind it. It's just worrying. So there are a lot of people who are also calling me every day like, what's going on? What? Why are prices just going up? Like, I mean, it doesn't just make sense. Who is buying up these things, right? So that's why you see somehow we just unfortunately just fall into the eye of authorities even without knowing you know what i mean so um that basically is my own you know um assessment of what or what is happening with, with in this advocate effects matter i think in the coming days uh there will be different you know more information that will get that can who knows maybe even change my opinion uh, or change the opinion of, you know of, of of others and i will we better start to understand what's happening but at the end of the day man guys it's all about the money. That's what I always said. It's all about the money. Follow the money and you follow the decision making and a lot of things that goes with it. The exchange rate is depreciating by the day and that is what is driving all of this. The reason why it is happening has not changed. We don't have enough dollar supply, pronto. That's it. The moment we have enough dollar supply, exchange rate will stabilize. And that will only happen if foreign portfolio investors come back into this country. And like someone said to me, we need to start to think about interest rates. Interest rates for the Naira today is very low. I know why it's low, because you need to stimulate the local economy. But people are not interested in investing in the Naira when all you get is less than 12% interest rate. Nobody's going to invest in it. So if interest rates are high, then maybe that could even help the situation, right? Because you don't have supply of dollars. So something has got to give. Um, so that's it. Before I start to go uh, technical and wax technical here, thank you all so much. Um, if you've got questions, drop it uh, in the comments section. I'm just, just I'm going to put up something in a couple of couple of days. Uh, it's a series that Diametrics has started. It's called Facts Behind the Figures, and we try and just put some some senses, a lot of numbers, a lot of things that you see out there. And, and this particular episode is going to be on what exactly do we spend dollars on, and how do we earn dollars? Let's just challenge ourselves. Let's know these things. I see what we can do better as a country. Thank you all very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.